Hey, hey, it's TDA, and welcome back to Dune Spice Wars. I did a poll recently that showed me that you guys really like the Atreides and the Fremen. Some of you even like the Harkonnen, but most of you do not like the Smugglers. At least, not, not your favorite faction. And I think that's a shame, so I decided to make a guide to showcase how strong the Smugglers actually are. If you just like watching gameplay, this is actually going to be suitable as well, because I am going to show you rather than to tell you how strong they are. Okay, so first things first, we are going to select some counselors, and specifically we are going to go for Stabin Tuwak, who is going to buff your underground headquarters, which are basically buildings you build in your opponent's villages, and this guy will make them even more useful than they already are by buffing the Solari and influence production of them. And on top of that, we are going to pick Banner G. And this guy is going to give you a lot more rewards if you pillage a village. And on top of that, you're going to get class creed from pillaging a village. Now, this basically means that you are going to be harassing the neutral villages around you. You are going to place underground headquarters in your opponent's villages. And basically, you are just going to annoy the hell out of them. It is really a fun faction to play. And once again, it plays completely different from any other faction. Now, as always, when you start up a new game, make sure you send your ornithopter to the spice field and start exploring the village over there. You are going to want to train two military units, one of each, and you are going to want to talk to Lido and say, Hey, I want your research. Yes, and then you on pause for a moment, you have him accept it, and then you do the same thing for the Solari production, because why not? It's free money and free research. Now what you also want to do is you are going to send your first two units to the village while your ornithopter is exploring that and you're also going to build a second ornithopter. You do want to explore as quickly as you can especially because not only do you want to know where you are going next with your units and your villages you also want to know where your opponents are because once again you can build stuff in their villages so you can only do that if you know where they are. Now I've also mentioned this in my previous guides, but make sure that when you are attacking your village that you place your melee unit up front. Make sure you send your melee unit to the ranged unit of the opponent so it's starting to tank and you, basically this unit will get a debuff by doing so. And that just makes sure that you're not getting yourself overwhelmed and you don't lose any units on your first attack. Because that would be a shame and is definitely not needed. Once you unlock your first village, make sure you go for the local dialect studies first. It will help you actually annex a couple of more villages and the investment of us itself is really good. Afterwards, go for the composite materials so you can start expanding a little bit faster and you won't spend as much resources on items uh, that you are going to build in your villages. And then on the third research you want to go for is the underground, underworld contracts. Now this will actually give you a lot more Solari when pillaging a village and you were already getting a lot thanks to your advisors. And on top of that you unlock the processing plant. The 2 plus Solari for underground headquarters is nice but not necessarily the main reason we take it. But hey it's a, another bonus. Now in case it wasn't obvious the first building you want to start building in your first village is a refinery so you can get your spice production underway. Uh, the second zone you actually want to be aiming for is ideally one that has mineral deposit because that will buff your plastic factory by 50% and that's going to be really nice. And yes, now usually if you keep up the tempo a little bit you should be getting your first research done the local dialect studies around the time you capture your second village so you will actually be able to benefit from the cost reduction from absorbing it make sure that you don't forget to actually deploy your harvester and just put on the, the, the uh, auto recall it is not worth losing a harvester just because you weren't paying attention just for a moment in your second village, what you definitely want to build first is that class creed factory that will benefit from the boost of your minerals. Now, you are also going to want to build a wind trap in order to get some more water in either of your first two villages, depending a little bit on where you have the most wind power. So ideally, in my case, for example, I have three wind power in each, but ideally you have one with a little bit more. You can build it over there. It doesn't really matter where you build it, but just make sure you make... Um, use of the wind power where you have it. Now this is also the time of the game where you want to make sure that you know where your second spice field is. Ideally you have already found it. You also kind of need to make use of your environment in a positive way and by that I mean that you ideally want to stay away from having 
borders next to one of your enemies. Um, that will just invite them to attack. And especially if you are playing on hard difficulty or above, you are going to be in a huge amount of pain if you are constantly having to defend yourself. So if you can expand to a second spice field or even a third and ideally without touching borders with anyone else. Uh, see if you can do that, but do make sure you claim as much territory as you can, because that will be very useful in terms of getting your production up and running. This is probably also a good time to start working on your third unit, and ideally that's going to be a melee unit. Some of the villages w might um, have three defense. Um, as you can see uh, right now, for me, it's only two, but a couple of the other villages will have three defenders, and you're definitely going to need that third unit in order to make sure you can actually comfortably take those villages. Remember that you can also pillage your villages, so that's going to be very interesting, but I'll show you that in a moment. Now, as always, your first agent should definitely go into Arrakis Infiltration so you can make use of all those little events on the map and get some additional authority going as well. Um, pretty much all the guilds and other elements where you can put in your agents are going to be useful for the smugglers, but definitely start with the Arrakis first. When it comes to these events, ideally try to find ones that are going to boost your developments. There are diff different ones for economic and military, etc. Uh, ideally, you want to prioritize whatever you are currently researching. Economic developments in particular, I think, are very good. But to be honest, they are all pretty good. But I would, in, especially in early game, prioritize economic over military over everything else, especially when you're playing the smugglers. Start expanding towards your second spice field as soon as you can after you get your second village. And ideally just grab whatever interesting zones are in between you and that spice field. Now once again if you have already eyes on your enemies, I don't have so at the moment. Make sure that you try to stay away from any zones that are next to their borders. Because once again that will just make your life difficult and you want some time for yourself if you can get it. Meanwhile, while you're doing that, you are probably going to want to build a recruitment office in the whatever village you did not build your second building in just yet. You are going to be very low on manpower with three units up and running. And well, that's what this building is for. Now don't forget that trading is a part of the game and it's actually a really useful part of the game if you are playing the smuggler. So for example, let's say I want some Plascrete, then I have a lot of Solari going around which doesn't really have much other use than trading off for whatever I want to get. And as you can see, I can get things like Plascrete at a pretty decent rate. Now you can also opt to get whatever else and you can also actually, rather than spending your Solari, which does have some uses early on, you could also trade off your influence. Now you're not going to win any Lanzarat voting because you don't get any votes to begin with, at least not initially, and you're not going to be able to produce enough influence to swing a vote in your direction anyway. So you might as well just sell them off and put them to some use, and then getting things like Plascrete is not the worst thing, considering you are going to build a lot of buildings in this phase of the game. Speaking of buildings, what you definitely also want to do is start building a fuel cell factory in your third village. Now ideally this is of course one of those villages that has the energy sources, but in this case I am expanding towards my second spice field. It doesn't happen to have this going for it, so I just need to deal with what I have available to me. So in your third village, in short, build a fuel cell factory so you can actually build a spice harvester in your fourth village, assuming that's your second spice field. After you complete your first initial three technologies, I suggest that you go for the water cellar contracts next. That will save you about a one full village of water for every three that you built. And on top of that, it's going to save you a lot of water from your military as well. So this is really useful in terms of saving water and saving building slots. And after that, I suggest that you go for the survival training as well as the guerrilla tactics. Survival training will actually give you the sniper unit, which is hugely powerful. And on top of that, this will also get you the 20% damage bonus against Militia, which may, will make pillaging that much more easy. And the 100% pillage annexation cost penalty reduced is huge as well. So you can pretty much just pillage whatever you want. But you were mostly taking this for the 20% damage boost because it will make it a lot easier to pillage a lot of villages around the map without necessarily dedicating a lot of units to that. 
As soon as you hit 50 manpower, make sure that you add a crew to your existing harvester. That will just give you an additional spice production boost. And that's, of course, always very useful to have. Also, make sure you manage your stockpile. And you don't want to overproduce this uh, spice if you can also turn it into money. And then look around. Is there any zone that you do not plan on annexing anytime soon? And if so, how much defense does it have? Ideally, you're looking for a village with two or three defense that is not in an area you're planning on taking next. Because once again, any village that you are going to pillage actually will get a um, additional authority cost if you want to annex it until we get that guerrilla tactics. So you might want to opt, for example, if you have something similar as I have at the moment, I definitely want to take these zones in the back because of the high wind power, because of the um, bonus production in terms of Solari, because of the um, minerals over here. So I'm probably not going to prioritize taking this specific zone over here. So that is a perfect um, a, a pillaging target and you will get huge bonuses from pillaging. So this will show you how much stuff you can actually get from pillaging. 500 Solari and 39 Plasgrid is huge, especially early on in the game. So make sure you make the most out of that. Uh, at the same time, make sure you actually defend your colonies because the AI does like to attack you when you least expect it. And these raids are not something to worry about, but they can be really annoying if you're not careful about them. Building a research hub early on is also a very huge boost to your research. Once again, you start out with so little research that just that single research from a research hub will actually give you a huge boost. Now some villages actually have a boost to research as well. Mine do not at the moment. But if you have any such village then definitely consider going for that one first. Another building that's very well suited to build at this stage of the game is the maintenance center. And you should ideally build it in a place where you know it's going to be bordering on several of your regions. So for example right now it's buffing itself as well as my uh, harvester region where I also built the research hub. So several expensive buildings are here in terms of upkeep that will now be reduced by building a maintenance center here. And I know I'm going to be expanding to all of these zones over here. So it's going to be bordering on several zones that are going to benefit from this re uh, upkeep reduction. So build a few of them across your nation in order to make sure you're not overpaying for all your buildings. When you're about to expand to your second spice village, you should also consider building another Plascrete factory. Because even if it's not in a zone with minerals to them, you're probably going to get a lot lower on production of that because you are having to deal with upkeep on a lot of your buildings. Now, of course, the maintenance center that I just mentioned as well will solve part of that problem, but you are going to need several of these factories anyway, so you might as well make sure you have them up and running. Now, when you get the opportunity to place bounties on the launch rod um, proposals, then ideally I would save your money early on. You do not have the influence to really affect the votes yourself. Uh, remember, the Atreides get 100 votes and the Arcolin get 80 of them. And the um, minor houses are pretty unpredictable. So even with placing a bounty, the minor houses won't really do what you want them to necessarily. So... Don't waste your money, basically, especially things like uh, scientific progress type of resolutions are probably not going to get past the AI does not like them. And, well, getting yourself elected or avoiding a debuff on yourself is probably not going to work with the bounties as well, at least not early on. So don't waste your money on these until you get a decent amount of influence up and running. Now, the next tip is a little bit controversial, but I do recommend getting a third ornithopter at some point as well uh, probably around the time when you can afford to do so and you're getting your third, second spice village so this will actually allow you to explore a little faster make sure you stay away from your opponents because once again for example over here i have the atreides uh, somewhat close to me you do not want your borders touching if you can avoid it at least until you're ready to deal with potential attacks now in this stage of the game I recommend building up your army a little further. Getting a sniper is a very good idea because they are very strong units. I also recommend you start 
pillaging villages whenever you can because that will actually add your hegemony score and you will need 2k to in order to start expanding your main base and that is going to be really powerful because you have all the money in the world and all the plastic greed in the world because you are raiding villages so expanding your um, main base with these very strong buildings is going to be relatively easy uh, for the smugglers and therefore being very strong in terms of what the other guys are doing at the same time. Now at this point in the game you will also need to refocus your research. Note that I already got modular parts because of the random unlocks from researching the events on the map. Um, but if you haven't, don't have it yet, this is a very good thing to go for next because you will be able to crew your harvesters with one additional crew member and at some point you will really need that so you might as well just pick it up. Um, the second thing I recommend you going for is ground command. This will actually allow you to split your army in two and, and make sure you either defend or go on the offense in terms of pillaging on multiple fronts. And in general, the reduced manpower upkeep is very useful as well. On top of that, what you could go for after is the army logistics. Um, gives you even more resources when pillaging a village. And you already are getting a lot. Remember, you can get something like 500 gold, sorry, solari, from uh, pillaging a village. So 30% more is already 150 uh, and that's not even counting the plastic grade just yet. However, the alternative is that you go more in the direction of the underworld world bribes. And this will actually allow you to get intel for pillaging a village. As well as your underworld headquarters, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, are going to produce intel as well. So this will really make your spying a lot stronger. In the meanwhile, going for the underground network is very useful as well. In terms of being able to expand your... Um, zone a little bit faster however your goal is not to get as many zones as you can your goal is to get as many zones as you can without getting your borders touched by the enemy because that will allow you to kind of stay by yourself build up the zones you already have you should have plenty of resources remember you're getting plastic greed from pillaging but you can also just trade for it if you need more in order to make use of all those building slots you have available and of course, last but not least, pretty much anything in the economic tree is going to be very useful. The Great Explain in particular, again, gives you the spice silos as well as the extra crew. This is going to be extremely useful. So if you're going for anything else in this tree, go there first. The economic lobbying is actually going to be really useful as well. So this is a solid choice, but even the energy markets is something you might find useful. So to be honest, anything here is good. But like I said, go for the modular parts first, then ground command, and then either go for the underground world bribes or the army logistics. And then after that, to be honest, it doesn't really matter what you pick up. But remember, while you're expanding and increasing your um, general quality of your zone you already have, what you really do need to do is make sure you keep all your production up and running. Um, get some manpower, get some solari, basically anything here is great, but don't neglect your research. You do want that knowledge up and running. From that perspective, local hubs is definitely something you could go for, even if it's just 0.2 knowledge per controlled village. It is a nice bonus, uh, and it's on the way to underground network anyway, so there's not really a reason not to pick this up, but you will really need a couple of research hubs in order to strengthen your research, because otherwise this will get very slow very quickly. Because remember, every time you research a technology, all the other technologies will be becoming more expensive. So you do need to actually increase your research substantially if you want to keep up with technology. Speaking of research, once you get access to your headquarters, which should be really fast considering you get 150 hegemony per pillaged village, that adds up really quick if you just focus on it a little bit. Um, and you should also have the required uh, materials to build something in your headquarters as a result of those pillaging uh, of villages. Uh, the first thing you should probably build is the research center. This is a very strong first building in pretty much every situation, I think every faction even. Um, but that will give you a huge boost to your technology and thereby make everything else easier. And a very solid second pick is going to be the Black Market Branch. So this is the special building for the smugglers. And getting all of these bonuses based on your other production is just going to give you tons and tons of Solari mainly. As well as uh, a decent amount of influence. And that's going to be extremely useful in terms of um, expanding your smuggling operations in the villages of the opponent so 
both of these choices as a single building district are going to be extremely strong they also give you uh, the second building will also give you the statecraft development completion speed bonus uh, and that will allow you to dive even further into the spying operations. And to be honest, I think generally speaking, that's a very good place to be. Even if you want to go for a military victory, which you definitely can with the smugglers as well. Spying is and just creating a big mess with operations is going to be a strong suit of the um, smugglers, regardless of the type of victory you're going for. So those two buildings are a very good start. After that... There is not really a wrong way to go, I think. Just make sure that depending on your end goal, you reserve the triple district or the double district bonus for that. Remember, you can only get one on the last column and one on the second column because of that. So depending on where you want to go, so let's say you want the um, Hegemony win, then getting the economic lobbies is going to be very strong. And that means that you should reserve your triple district bonus for three yellow buildings um if you're going for a military victory it may, would make sense to at least have the two power or the two armor um on your army as well etc etc so i think that speaks kind of for itself there are no bad buildings but make sure you start out with the research center as well as the black market branch because those are going to be very strong either way now remember that while you're pillaging your villages and expanding your zones, upgrading all your headquarter buildings, etc., you will find yourself likely with a lot of Solari to spend. And a very useful way to spend that as the smugglers is installing Unrod headquarters in your enemies' villages. Now remember that due to the counselor that we picked, we actually get a small bonus from having them adjacent to each other. It's only 5 Solari, or at least uh, you could say 10 Solari because they also to get both of them get the bonus uh, it's not a huge thing to seek after but if you're placing these down anyway you might as well take advantage of that bonus so once you build these remember the cost does go up as they uh, as you place more of them so the first one costs 100 second one 200 and so on so there is a small increase in that and as you can see because we now have two of them next to each other they are each producing seven solari so they will earn themselves back quite quickly as well as a half influence per each so this is a, a huge bonus in terms of influence now when it comes to building things in these you can build something in every slot for the buildings that your enemy has in that village as well so right now i could be building two and soon three buildings in here and you have a couple of options a few of them have to do with um production so those are very useful depending on of course what the enemy is doing in this village so the bootleg market is a very strong option that basically produces 30 percent of the spice solari or water as solari for you so this will uh, be especially um, useful in spice producing or um, solari producing villages of your opponent the water production is not always all that useful, but especially spice and solar production tends to be higher than water. But anyway, it's a nice little way to get even more solar. The contraband cash is only useful if you're going to pillage your enemies' villages. So if you're going to do that, by all means build this, it will be worth it. If you're not going to do that, don't bother. The worker skill is actually interesting. This actually boosts the production of the village and that means that your bootleg market would be boosted as well but generally speaking be very careful about building this because it's easy to just give your opponent a boost the back alley doctor as well as the hidden explosives are very interesting if you're going to attack a set village so this use these strategically if you're going to attack that specific village back alley doctor will help your units heal the hidden explosives will basically blow up half their militia uh, just at the moment that you're attacking that village. The clandestine scouts are interesting as well. Once again, it's a buff to your military. So it's all of these three combined are very useful if you're planning on attacking these villages. Now the spyware, not entirely sure about this one. This will actually give you a small um, research bonus on items that the enemy already has researched. If you're doing your job well, you should be able to keep up fairly well with your opponent. So... Uh, and the, bo the bonus that you get is not that big so generally speaking i would stay away from this but yeah if you fall behind for whatever reason you could i guess consider that now the whispers there is interesting if you're going for a heavy spy approach and that is definitely an option in the late game so 
think about that whether or not you're going to put that down and the activist quarters are very interesting in terms of the launch route so if you combine a couple of activist quarters with a lot of these uh, underground headquarters that will produce you a lot of influence you actually get a quite a lot of influence to spend in the launch rod and on top of that you also have the bounties you can place on the launch rod resolution so it is definitely a way to go generally speaking i would suggest to either go with bootleg markets or with activist quarters and anything else other than that is really up to the decision that you need to make is this actually going to be useful in that village so be carefully but Generally speaking, starting with the bootleg market is just going to mean this village is going to earn itself back really quickly, of course, depending on what is currently being produced in that village. When it comes to upgrading your army in the mid to late game, make sure you get a couple of these free company units. They are extremely strong, as you can see, a nice amount of health attack as well as armor. And on top of that, they actually get a bonus uh, to their power based on how much damage you have already done. So these are quite strong, if you, especially if you combine them with snipers and wreckers. These will kind of soften everything up and then the free company units will just tear them apart. So getting one or even two of these is very useful. And of course, in the meanwhile, make sure you keep expanding and progressing. To give you an impression of what a mid-game status of the game could look like, this is kind of it. So we have uh, consolidated most of our closest regions. Uh, once again, we are trying to stay away from the borders of everyone else. We are doing a pretty decent job at that. Remember that you can also pillage the village next to you. You want to be doing that anyway. And if you do that, you actually avoid your enemy taking them over instead so it's a really easy way to keep a buffer between you and the enemy now on top of that i start upgrading my headquarters one of each so i built the barracks to have a little bit more defense slash offense the experience gain is also quite useful early on we have the black market branch and the research center as we discussed before and i also built the harvester works as well as the coam branch to basically optimize my spice production and also get the 10 percent solari bonus and as you can see right now, we're making a huge amount of Solari already. Um, I'm also building plastic factories in most of my towns, just make sure we keep that up. Um, and on top of that, we are trying to kind of optimize our um, research a little bit. We are trying to field a pretty decent army, so this will be a pretty tough nut to break for our opponent if we, we were under attack, which we are currently not. But anyway, we are also already producing 10 influence per day, which is huge. And from this point on, it's basically wherever you want to go. As you can see, I have a huge amount of resources, so I can start building whatever I want in terms of my upgrades in my capital. With 2k Solari, and especially the income that goes along with it, expanding into more um, of these underground headquarters could be very feasible as well. I already built quite a few of them, actually, in the... Uh, Arconan territory and they are making a huge amount each so this is where a lot of that production is coming from and well like I said basically from this point on is basically where you want to go you can just keep turtling up uh, I do ex recommend that you at some point start expanding if there's valuable zones nearby even if it's close to where your opponent is you after all you want you to have those zones not your opponent but ideally try to avoid um, having borders next to everyone because that probably will mean they will all start attacking you you will be pulling ahead in this phase of the game so you are the main target and well you won't, don't want to spend all your time defending because that way you won't actually get a chance to go on the offense although that's not necessarily a problem if you're going for an assassination or a hedge enemy win so keep that in mind as well Last but not least, when you reach 10k hegemony, you'll be able to build underworld headquarters in your enemy's main base as well. Now, honestly, it's not the strongest part of the smuggler's special abilities, but if you have spare solari anyway, you can definitely make use of this. So the contraband hub will actually give you bigger rewards if you're pillaging their villages. However, if you're pillaging their villages, you might as well just wipe them off the map. Uh, laundering network can be really good for example in this case they do have a completed district with two buildings which in this case would actually give me a plus 60 solari production so that's a pretty hefty bonus uh, however you would also have to pay 1000 solari to get it going so it takes a while to pay itself back but all in all uh, it's not the worst choice if you have some time to spare and some solari to spare However, the hidden explosives are really strong if you actually try to wipe this particular enemy off the map. 
Once you attack the base, it will actually blow up a huge amount of its armor. Right now it's actually all the armor. And that will make it a lot easier to actually destroy an enemy headquarters. So this can be really strong if used when you're going for a military victory, at least against this specific faction. Now weapons dealers can actually be very strong as well. Again, situational. They do need to have a completed military district. For example, right now, the Fremen do, do have a military building, but it's not completed in their district, so it wouldn't, wouldn't actually do anything. But if they would complete this entire district, it would be three buildings over here. And then, for example, we, I, in this case, I would get a 9% bonus. Now, again, very situational, but this can actually be really strong. Now, the Whisperer's Hub, to be honest, is I think one of the worst choices. Then infiltration is not really something you, you are usually looking for. And having your agents the, being buffed in terms of their escaping, not that strong either. If they get caught, you can just buy them back usually without too much hassle. So all in all, not, not too uh, excited about that one. And then the activist headquarters actually boosts your maximum influence. Can be useful in the right circumstances, especially if you're producing a huge amount of influence. Uh, but they, again, they do need to have a completed statecraft district. So... Again, situational. All in all, not the biggest thing in the world to forget about or use. But especially if you're going for a military victory, do not forget about the hidden explosives. It is extremely useful if you want to wipe your enemy off the map. Now, let's talk about a few more things. Because what happens if you take the smugglers to the extreme? So one thing you can do at some point when you are done with expanding most of your own territory and you don't need as much authority anymore, you can start trading for Solari with all of the other uh, factions. Now, as you can see, this will give you an insane boost to your Solari production. And from that point on, you can just buy whatever other resources you need back from the other uh, factions. And doesn't matter if it's Splash Creed or maybe Influence or even Intel, you can buy whatever you want basically with this amount of income incoming now with that income and especially with intel what you could do is spend it and for say um, start some rebellions in their cities and that will basically force them to respond to that drawing their armies to their villages um, and if you are at that point attacking on the other side of their territories that is going to cause some major issues for them. Especially if you combine that with things like hidden explosive in their villages. You can really quickly take out different sides of their villages at the same time. But let's say that doesn't work. What you can also do is just bomb the hell out of them. Just go nuclear. Now that will reduce your land rat standing by a lot. But hey, it is a lot of fun to do. So why not? Alright guys, so well this was the end of the guide to the smugglers. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Let me know in the comments and I will catch you in the next one.